Hello friends, today we are guiding you to prepare interview questions on API, development, implementation, documentation, testing. In comments you can share the topic of your interest, our team will prepare the video for you. Before continue to our session, we request you to join our channel for all the latest updates. Our team of technical and subject matter experts are working hard to create valuable content just for you. So please make sure to hit the subscribe button, like and comment on our videos, and click the bell icon to stay updated with our latest videos. What are OAuth and JWT, and how do they work in API authentication? OAuth and JWT are widely used authentication mechanisms in REST APIs to secure user access and data exchange. OAuth, Open Authorization OAuth 2.0 is an authorization framework that allows third-party applications to access resources without exposing user credentials. It uses access tokens to grant limited access. OAuth works as follow, the client requests authorization from the user. The authorization server verifies the user and issues an authorization code. The client exchanges the code for an access token. The client includes the token in API requests, for example, authorization, bearer token. The server validates the token and grants access. OAuth is used by platforms like Google, Facebook, and GitHub for secure logins. JWT, JSON Web Token, JWT is a self-contained, stateless token used for authentication and data exchange. It consists of three parts, header to define the algorithm and token type. Payload to contain user data, claims. Signature to ensures integrity and authenticity. JWT works as follows. User logs in and receives a JWT. The token is sent in API requests, authorization, bearer JWT underscore token. The server validates the token without database lookups. JWT is lightweight and scalable, making it ideal for modern applications. What are API rate limiting and throttling? How do they work? API rate limiting and throttling are techniques used to control the number of API requests a client can make within a specific time frame, ensuring security, stability, and fair usage of resources. API rate limiting Rate limiting restricts the number of requests a client can make within a given period, for example, 100 requests per minute. It prevents abuse, server overload, and DOS attacks. A limit is set per user, IP, or API key. The API tracks request counts. If the limit is exceeded, the API returns 429 too many requests. Clients must wait or retry after a cooldown period. API throttling. Throttling slows down excessive requests instead of blocking them outright. It helps maintain performance while preventing abuse. The API monitors incoming traffic. If a client sends too many requests, the API delays responses or queues requests. Clients continue receiving responses but at a controlled rate. Common rate limiting methods are as follows. Fixed window, limits requests per fixed time, for example, 100 per minute. Sliding window, more flexible, tracks requests dynamically. Token bucket, clients receive tokens at intervals, requests need tokens. Rate limiting and throttling ensure fair resource distribution, prevent abuse, and improve API reliability. How do you secure an API from common vulnerabilities like SQL injection and XSS? Securing an API from SQL injection, XSS, cross-site scripting, and other vulnerabilities is crucial to protect sensitive data and prevent attacks. To prevent SQL injection, SQL injection occurs when attackers insert malicious SQL queries into API inputs to manipulate the database. To secure against SQL injection use prepared statements and parameterized queries to prevent direct execution of user input. Example, Python with Sklalchemy, cursor.execute select from users where read equals, user underscore read. Input validation and sanitization to reject unexpected input formats. Least privilege principle to restrict database access for API users. To prevent XSS, cross-site scripting, XSS occurs when attackers inject malicious scripts into an API response, affecting client-side execution. To secure against XSS, 
escape output data, encode special characters, endearment before rendering in HTML, content security policy, CSP, to restrict script execution sources, validate and sanitize user input to prevent script injections in API requests. Additional security measures, use HTTPS to encrypt data in transit. Authentication and authorization to implement OAuth 2.0, JWT, or API keys. Rate limiting and throttling to prevent abuse and DOS attacks. By following these practices, APIs remain secure against common threats. What is API Gateway, and why is it important? An API gateway is a server that acts as an entry point for multiple APIs, managing requests, security, and traffic control. It serves as a middleware layer between clients and backend services, handling authentication, logging, rate limiting, and load balancing. API gateway is important for following reasons. Centralized request management, it routes API calls to the appropriate microservices, simplifying communication. Security, implements authentication, OAuth, JWT, encryption, HTTPS, and protection against attacks, DDoS, SQL injection. Rate limiting and throttling, prevents abuse by limiting the number of requests from clients. Load balancing, distributes traffic efficiently to ensure performance and reliability. Caching, stores responses temporarily to improve speed and reduce backend load. Protocol translation, converts requests between different protocols like REST, gRPC, or WebSockets. Logging and monitoring, tracks API usage, errors, and performance metrics for better debugging. Example, popular API gateway solutions include AWS API Gateway, Kong, Apagai, and Jinx. An API gateway is essential for scalability, security, and efficient API management, especially in microservices architecture where multiple services need to be managed seamlessly. What are WebSockets, and when would you use them instead of REST APIs? WebSockets are a full duplex communication protocol that enables real-time, bidirectional data exchange between a client and a server over a single persistent connection. Unlike REST APIs, which follow a request-response model, WebSockets allow continuous communication without needing repeated requests. Use WebSockets instead of REST APIs in following scenarios. Real-time applications WebSockets are ideal for applications requiring instant data updates, such as chat applications, live notifications, and stock market tracking. High-frequency data exchange in cases where frequent updates are required, like real-time gaming or collaborative editing, Google Docs, WebSockets reduce overhead compared to REST, which requires repeated polling. Event-driven systems, WebSockets enable servers to push data to clients as events occur, making them suitable for IoT devices, live dashboards, and messaging systems. Reduced latency since WebSockets maintain a persistent connection, they eliminate the delay caused by repeated HTTP requests in REST APIs, improving responsiveness. Key differences from REST APIs are as follows. WebSockets use a single persistent connection, low latency, while REST APIs rely on a stateless request response model. WebSockets are efficient for real-time communication, whereas REST is better for traditional, one-time data retrieval. Majorly we use WebSockets for real-time, high-frequency updates and REST APIs for standard, stateless interactions. Thanks for watching the video till the end. If you liked the video and haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button, like and comment on our videos, and click the bell icon to stay updated with our latest videos. In comments you can share the topic of your interest, our team will prepare the video for you.